Hi, I'm Malik Jordan from Learn Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com. One of the questions that I get a lot is what are good specs for an editing machine? Now, before we discuss the guidelines for an editing uh, computer, I think it's important first to understand the basics. You know, what are the main components um, you know, of a computer and how do they help in uh, editing and color grading? So that when you want to get a new system, you know what to look for. So let's start now with a very simple presentation that I put together that should first explain the basics. So if we take a look at the computer, there are four main things in every system that are important the CPU or the central processing unit, the GPU or the graphics processing unit, the RAM or the random access memory, and the HDD or your storage. So let's take a look at each one of these components. First, let's take a look at the CPU. You can think of the CPU as a worker, so someone who does the job you ask them for. So for example, if you get an image and you ask the computer to turn the image into a black and white image, this is a job for the CPU. So the CPU will process the image, so it does the work you asked it for. So this is the CPU. So what's the GPU? You can simply think of the GPU as another worker. However, this is a very specialized worker that that only works on graphic related things. So both workers work together. For example, the CPU handles your video and your graphics, but at the same time, it handles the operating system itself. Like for example, Windows or Mac. It might handle things like lowering the volume of the computer and all other tasks. However, the GPU will kick in and help only for video related stuff. So it's graphical. It's another worker that works only on graphics. So. These are the CPU and the GPU. What's the RAM? Now imagine if these two workers are working on something you asked them for. You can think of the RAM as simply a table in front of them where they put information they're working on currently at this particular point in time on this table. So the larger the table is, they can put more stuff to work on at the same time. Then let's take a look at the HDD or the storage. In this case, I'm just using HDD as an example because it's the most used word. However, HDD is simply one type of storage. You can think of this as when the workers are working and they have their table in front of them. The HDD is the storage, is where the computer keeps all the extra information that the workers are not working on at this particular moment. However, the information needs to be stored somewhere in case they needed it. So how does the information flow here? First, you have the storage. So all the information is stored. And let's say you want to edit something. This is where the computer will transfer this particular piece of footage you're working on from storage into RAM or the table that the workers can work on. Then the CPU will start working on your footage. And for graphics related things like video, for example, or changing the colors of your video, it will ask for help from the GPU. So these are the basic components of a computer. And now I'll be discussing the recommendations. So this is all, I guess, easy, uh, you know, theoretically. Again, disclaimer, this is not like a super look into a computer. These are just for you to understand the basics of, of the components you're working with. I'm just trying to simplify or even oversimplify things. So let's start with the processor. What are the recommendations for the processor? There are many things we won't be discussing here, like hyper-threading, for example, but this is just a very easy and simple overview. Every processor have cores. You can think of cores as how many tasks a processor can do at the same time. Uh, think of it like instead of having one worker, if you have a dual core, you have two workers. And maybe if your system have four cores, you have four workers. So having more cores will enable your CPU to do multiple things at the same time. This means that your CPU will do the job faster. For example, and again, this is not the most scientific way to explain it, but imagine if you have an image and you ask the processor to, for example, increase the exposure or change the colors. Theoretically, the processor, if it's, for example, a quad core or four core processor, it will cut the image into four different parts where every core of the processor will work only on one quarter of the image. So the work can be done much faster. Again, remember, this is an oversimplification, but just think of it this way. So whenever I look for a processor, one of the most important things I look for is how many cores. 
At this point, I think four cores would be the sweet spot if you're working from a laptop. The newer um, Intel processor, they have six cores. And of course, if you go to desktop, you can get up to 18 cores, for example. But for the most part, four cores would be sufficient enough. Then the processor will have speed, you know, like four gigahertz, two gigahertz, 2.5 gigahertz. This is also important. However, personally, I usually prioritize the number of cores uh, on speed. However, that's my personal preference. Let's move to the next component. The GPU. Now remember when we discussed RAM, we said RAM is like a table where the workers work on. One of the things I did not mention is that the GPU can have its own small table to the side, which is separate from the main table they're working on. So it can have its own RAM to the side that it only can access. And this is usually called VRAM. So this is a dedicated RAM or table, you know, only for the GPU. So before we get into recommendations, now you understand that there's something called VRAM. There are two main types of GPUs, integrated and dedicated. So what's an integrated GPU? The integrated GPU is a low power GPU that does not have its own RAM. It shares the RAM available or the table available with the, the CPU. So it doesn't have a dedicated VRAM. And in very simple terms, you should always try to stay away from this kind of GPU. And no matter how much the salesperson tells you that this is a very powerful and a good GPU, if it's integrated, you should always try to stay away from it. Then we have the dedicated GPU. This is a GPU that is more powerful and one of its main features is that it has its own dedicated RAM as VRAM. So of course, the more VRAM, the better. This is where you get these numbers where, for example, this is a four gig GPU. This is referring to the amount of VRAM available to the GPU. Now, how much VRAM do you need? Of course, the GPU has way more things, you know, that you need to understand. However, just as a general ballpark, you should always try to look at the amount of VRAM it has because all video editing environments work way better with a dedicated GPU. So even if you don't have the most expensive GPU, still I would say a dedicated GPU is a must for video editing. So how much VRAM do you need? I would say at this point that the lowest you can go is two gigs, so two gigabytes of, of VRAM. Uh, however, this is also the standard today. I mean, four is, is just normal for gaming laptops. A lot of gaming laptops come with, uh, with four gigabytes of RAM. Uh, due to the requirement of the GPU, I think usually uh, most gaming laptops, uh, even if they're slightly lower end, if it's a gaming laptop, it should work fine for video editing just due to the fact that gaming laptops tend to always have dedicated GPUs. So I would say that at this point, uh, try to get a two to four uh, gigabyte GPU. Okay, let's move on to RAM or the table that the workers work on. In a very simple way, 32 gigabytes of RAM is great, 16 is what's recommended, eight is the minimum. However, this machine has eight gigabytes of RAM and it's been working fine for me. Like I've been having no issues. However, just to go with the recommendation, usually try to get uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, eight is the lowest and 32 is great. Also, there are two different types of RAM. This refers to how fast the RAM is in processing information or how fast you can put things on the table and remove things from the table. There is the DDR4 RAM, which is at this point the fastest, I guess, and it's great. And if you can get it, that would be great. However, there's also DDR3, which works absolutely fine for video editing. This is also a DDR3 uh, machine. Finally, let's move to the storage, which is one of the most underlooked uh, parts of computers because you will go to buy, you know, a laptop for editing and it will have, you know, a lot of RAM, like this has 32 gigs of RAM and it has this and that GPU and this and that CPU. However, it will have a mechanical hard drive inside it, which is pretty slow because when you store information, think about it this way. What good is the information if it's stored, but it's very slow to move from the storage to the table the workers work on. So the workers can work fast, the table is fast, the whole production is fast. However, moving the information from storage to the working area is pretty slow, this will make your whole system slow. So the speed of the storage device is very important. So what to look for here? First, you need to understand that uh, generally storage falls into two main categories, SSDs and 
HDDs, so hard disk drives and solid state drives. HDDs or hard disk drives have mechanical parts inside them, so the mechanical parts have to move physically to retrieve the information, and this makes them extremely slow. I do understand that in certain configurations, like RAID configuration, you can get fast hard drives, but at that point, you know what you're doing. If you're getting a laptop and you're working from it, if it has a mechanical drive or a hard disk drive, that's definitely a problem. Not to say that you cannot edit from it, but it's definitely not the fastest uh, thing you can do. It will just make the whole editing experience feel a bit slow. The next type is solid state drives or SSDs. These have no mechanical parts that move inside and they're very fast and they're definitely what you should be trying to get. In, in your system because they're faster. However, SSDs tend to be smaller in size. Just keep that in mind. One important thing also is that to use different drives in your system. So for example, you have drive A, which is inside the laptop itself, you know, running the operating system, whether Mac or, or Windows, handling all the normal operations of your system. Then getting an external SSD or an external hard drive if you want, but I would prefer an SSD and connecting it to your laptop and have all the video files inside it. However, there is one important thing to remember. Let's say you have a very fast external SSD and you connect it to your laptop. However, the connection between the SSD and the laptop itself is very slow. Then what's the point of having a fast SSD? So you need to make sure that your SSD, if you get an external SSD, supports USB 3 at least, which will be fast enough to, you know, to transfer the data. So the SSD must support USB 3, your computer must support uh, USB 3, and uh, the connection you use must be USB 3, which is pretty much the standard now. I doubt that at this point you can get uh, USB 2, but it's just worth mentioning. So I just want to emphasize one thing. The most important thing about your system is that all of these components function good enough. So there should be no bottlenecks that you don't get the fastest GPU or the fastest CPU with a hard disk, for example, or you have all the other requirements correct, but you have four gigs of RAM. It's very important that even if you cannot get the fastest things to get everything functioning well enough, this is the most important thing in a system. So if you like this, please visit us at learncolorgrading and filmsimplified.com. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com. 